Hi guys, look at you here and happy Halloween. <laughs> you know, I had to switch it up a bit, put on my orange halloween -y shirt. Today we'll be making a spicy salmon onigiri, but with a spooky twist. <gasps> Aunt, look at you, I'm a bit scared. What is this twist? <laughs> oh, you know, just coating it with some blood. I mean, hot Cheetos. And the innards of this rice ball will be stuffed with spicy salmon. <laughs> that makes this dish, oh, so spooky. So stick around till the end and we can get spooked together. Now let's get hot Cheeto onigiri -ing. So I'm getting a bit old for trick-or-treating, but there's always this one house I go to because, well, they just can't tell the difference between a toddler and a grandma. Yes, it's Miku's house, and she always provides the cutest loot bags. But this year, she actually pulls me aside and gives me a full-sized bag of hot Cheetos. And just my luck, another trick-or-treater saw this whole ordeal, and the hippie tries to steal the bag from me. But luckily, Miku demanded her to stop and she scurried away treatless. Now the main ingredient to an onigiri is rice. Rice is to onigiri as clay is to sculpture. We'll make around six onigiris, so you'll need around three cups of cooked rice to tightly hug our lovely spicy salmon filling. And when you think of that, you might think that it's raw fish chopped up in itty bitty pieces and coated in spicy mayo. But uh uh uh, we're gonna use something even better. Some wild salmon I caught just now, straight from the canned food section of my local grocery store. To a bowl, plop in your canned salmon, and I think it wants to swim in a little mayo. So add in three tablespoons of your favorite mayo, mine is QP. And we can't forget a squeeze of limon juice for a nice zing. And we all know I'm a spicy girl. So I'll go ahead and squeeze a generous portion, around one tablespoon, of the deathly spicy sriracha. Then we're gonna do a little mixy mix. We're gonna do a little mixy mix. And your parents have probably told you not to play with your food, but you're allowed to today. With a bowl of water, I'm gonna wet my clean hands, you know, just to prevent myself from becoming Edward Rice Hands. Take around a third of a cup of warm rice and firmly press and mold it into a ball. We're doing this so the rice grains stick together nicely, so your onigiri won't turn into an oni oh no. After you have a nice ball, simply indent a little little well shape with your fingers into the center and our spicy salmon is looking a little tired so take a teaspoon of the filling and tuck it in our bed of rice and to ensure it's nice and snug i like compacting the filling with my clean left thumb while simultaneously hugging the rice border gradually squeeze the rice rim slowly into the middle molding and compacting it like you're forming a snowball to hit your worst enemy with i know that'll get you making the tightest rice balls ever wet your hands and take Take some water to wet a clean surface. Place the snowball onto the wet surface, making an L shape with your hands and pressing the sides of the rice ball with your other hand patting down the top of the ball. After a few pats and wax, it magically forms into the cute onigiri emoji that we all know and love. And if you didn't know, in ancient times, the Japanese would bring these rice balls molded in a mountain shape in their lunch boxes when traveling to protect them from ghosts. <gasps> Now, why do mountains equal protection of ghosts, you may ask? Not too sure. Since these are cute little mountains, they don't seem too intimidating for our fellow ghosts. Like, ah, they have cute little squishy rice mountains in their pockets. I'm so scared. Anyways, these rice triangles are looking a little chilly. So grab some nori. Cut a tiny blanket for them. I'm dividing this sheet into eight strips and then cutting each strip in half. Wrap the blanket around the bottom of the triangle, making sure the nori is shiny side facing outwards, and keeping them nice and snugly. And this is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to... Hot Cheeto fight the rice balls. But not before we take a little snack break. Mm -hmm. 
I've actually seen people freeze their hot Cheetos. They say it tastes immaculate, okay? My little baggie of Cheeto puffs. <laughs> this is my first time trying frozen hot Cheeto puffs. It tastes like someone bursted a cold spritz of air into your mouth. But anyways, grab a bag of hot Cheetos, yank it open, take a whiff, and take two handfuls of these glorious puffs, tossing it into a blender and blend, pulse, or smash them in a sandwich bag. Transfer the forbidden pixie dust onto a plate. Just be sure not to get too hypnotized by its mesmerizing texture, because now we gotta grab a rice triangle and coat and roll all of its sides in some of this spicy and scary cheeto dust and there we have it spicy salmon onigiri spooky style and before all my drool runs out let's dig in all right so this is the finished product and i'm super excited Ooh. All right, cheers, first bites for you. Mm, nom, nom, nom. Mm. When you first take a bite, you get hit with that hot Cheeto flavor. Then you chew a little and you reach that nice spicy salmon filling. Not too spicy though, but has a really good chili flavor from the sriracha, and a nice creaminess from the QP mayo. Mmm! Rice is nice and chewy. The hot Cheeto coating gives a nice change of texture, just like, you know, when you eat a jelly donut and there's like powdered sugar on the outside, you just take a bite and then your whole mouth, your whole face gets coated in the powdered sugar. This is the same thing, except hot Cheeto form. And this is definitely a very spooky treat. All right, so this gets look at you stamp of approval. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post once a week. And I'll see you guys next time. Happy Halloween! <laughs>